Hey everyone, this is Dylan Drazen. I've decided to create another, another video. Um, the last video I made was the um, sort of the chronicles of making Down South. And this is the second um, video I've decided to make. Um, this time about uh, a remix that I did for the first release of a new Spanish label last year called Selectry Records. Um, a fellow DJ named uh, Robert Guerrero emailed me, asked me if I wanted to remix um, a track of his for the first release. So he sent it to me and I gave it a listen and I felt like it had um, some interesting sounds that I would have fun with. So um, what I did here was I opened the original track and then my remix. And I will show you the parts that he sent me and the parts that I chose to use and the parts that I didn't choose to use. And then I'm going to open the uh, Ableton Live project and show you exactly what I did and how and which plugins that I used. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just play a little bit of the uh, the original and then my remix. But um, there are links at the bottom of this video. You can look at, um, you can listen to the entire tracks on there on their own, so I won't waste too much time in this video, but this is what he sent me, and this is what I had heard first. There is a head of PE people uh, at a community college in the UK, all right, in Cambridge. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> So I can already say immediately that there are things that I really like about this track and things that I really don't like already. Um, the vocal I find kind of obnoxious, but I find the sound of the vocal kind of interesting. And I feel, felt like I could have do, done things with the vocal. Um, and that synth, that sort of rave alarm synth, um, sustained I didn't like too much, but I thought maybe if I could cut it up a little bit and put it in interesting spots and make it a little bit more funky. I, but I love the bass line and I love that noise but I don't like that synth line. So I thought that if you could send me each individual part, I could make um, make it more to my liking, personally. Um, let's go through a little bit. And some of these melodies are cool, and others are a little bit corny, in my opinion, so I just wanted to pick the ones that I liked the most. That's what's fun about remixing, is you can do exactly... You can take the track, if you like parts of it and don't like other parts of it, you can make it your own. And that's that I, I find that a lot of fun. It's like the DJ in me. That's all awesome. So I wanted to sort of incorporate those sounds, but while still making it my own. Then this whole part kind of loses me. It's not really, a, I'm not really interested in it. A little silly. But I get why people like it. It's just not for me. A little druggy for my taste. But then this is cool stuff. All right, so that was the track, and then um, briefly I will show you real quick what I did. This is the final product, the master, um, and uh, so these are the, you can just hear what I did. I just took one of the loops as the beginning part, and then it slowly develops. I bring the bass in real slow, filter it way down. My tracks tend to develop very slowly. There's a breakbeat in there that he gave me. And, and then you hear the vocal. And I just sort of stick little bits of it here and there. It's like a 90s house influence, of course. And just bring the sounds in one by one. There's the noise. And then there's the synth line. And then there's the noise, but with an extreme sidechain compression. Using the kick as the uh, sidechain master. And I'll show you how I did that. And then the theme, the little synth line comes in, and I bring it in very gradually and slowly with a filter and lots of effects, which I'll show you. And then there's
there's a long breakdown with the synth line. That string is the only original sound that I used. Everything else he gave me. But that synth I actually um, created myself with a, with a plugin called Omnisphere. And I put a sidechain on the string as well. As well as with the noise coming in so that everything comes in together right here. And it's that the sidechain on the noise with the string with the same sidechain and a slight sidechain on the bass all mastering to the kick gives it that openness and there's a lot of panning going on a lot of uh, effects on the other loops to give it that sort of openness but not um, there's a lot going on but there's also it also feels minimal at the same time and that's because it's very selective with these um, the sounds that I wanted to use. You don't want to just throw everything in there because it's just going to sound like a clusterfuck. And then it winds down over time. It's good for mixing. Okay. So that is what I did with it. I will show you sort of the process that I went through. <clears throat> the parts that he sent me were these. Um, I used most of them. Let's see. I think some of these are bounces and that I did not use. That's why it's not highlighted. That was a bass, I mean, a, a, um, a bounce of the bass with all the compression. So that was the, this is the bass that I ended up uh, putting into the track. But this is the bass that he actually sent me. A little bit quieter, just a loop. And then that one, it was, that's my version of it. Um, that I didn't like, so I didn't use it. It's a nice little hi-hat pattern I used. That's the kick. I, I ended up using the kick he sent me. That you can do lots with. Um, I, was, I got pretty creative with that, and I'll show you. And then these are, um, I think, well, this was the noise that he initially sent me. And then I created a reverse noise. I think I created this. I'm, I'm not even sure anymore. This has been almost a year since I've done this. But um, when there are like these sweeping sounds, I like to make a reverse version of it for build-ups, obviously, and stuff. Um, I believe I used that. I don't know why it's not highlighted. I think I used that, too. I definitely used that. I did a lot of weird things to it. Breakbeats are a lot of fun to work with. Um, uh, raw, they sound terrible, but, but there's so much cool stuff you can do with breakbeats for uh, Funky Tech House. That I used. I really like that loop. I think I didn't end up using that, but I highlighted it because I thought I was going to. Same story with that. The shaker I definitely used. And then these are the synths. Oh, don't believe I used this. And this. That's the sort of obnoxious synth, but I just took little bits of it and just sliced them in here and there as funky moments, which I'll show you. Same with that. That's the main theme of the track. It's a very important loop, so I made sure to give it some special attention. Don't believe I used that. Not, don't remember if I used that. And this is the vocal, I think. This I did not use. This is the vocal I used. Yeah. So I just used the very, very beginning, just when she goes there, and I just loop it here and there. I don't remember if I use that or not. A fellow employee. And that I didn't use. Okay. So those are the original sounds. And here is my project. Um, usually um, I make several uh, several different session files. After each session I'll duplicate it and then make a new one the next day. This I ended up doing all in one day. I did this in about, I don't know, probably took me about four hours or something. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like. Probably should open this in beforehand. Hello. Hmm. Oh, that was open beforehand. Silly me. All right, let's go full screen. <clears throat> So the first thing you'll see, move this up here, is um, 
the kick has two tracks. And the reason I did that was because um, I like to put a little extra attack on the kicks in my tracks. Um, the original kick sounded like this. I'll go through each plugin what I did. I just put a very sort of, um, this is part of Sound Toys. It's a really cool set of plugins. Um, I put a, um, looks like I just had the default, but I may have done some things to it. Just put some slight distortion on the kick. So the kick sounds like this. And, whoops, and without this, it would sound like that. So there's a little bit of extra oomph in there. That's what this plugin does. Um, I, I increased the drive a little bit and um, sort of just called it a day. And then there's um, the same exact kick drum, but with a filter. So this is um, also from Sound Toys. It gives it a very sort of, Sound Toys, the collection has a very sort of analog um, feel with sort of an emphasis on distortion. And this, I just obviously uh, filtered the bass out and it's just doing its own thing here. So I, I let it sort of, you hear some bass in there and I, I probably, in retrospect, I probably should have EQ'd some, that bass out, um, but it's not such a big deal. Um, and next, I, let's go back to being a track. So this is the breakbeat. And if you remember, this is what it sounded like by itself. Actually, let's make a loop here. Make everything easier. Right, so that's that's the original sound. And then I added um, two filter freaks, which are both from Sound Toys. So this basically filters out the irritating high frequencies and also adds um, a gate. So makes it more of, sounds like more choppy instead of a full loop. Because I, I, the loops that I like to work with, I want them to have their own space. And I want to be able to work with other sounds within each other so that they can talk to each other, if that makes sense. Um, otherwise, it's just, if you have a loop like this and a bunch of other loops, it's going to sound awful. So you want to kind of, you know, it's it's... The, the genre might be minimal, but I'm also minimal with how I produce because the more minimal you are with everything, the more elements you can put in and then each element can talk to each other. It gets to the point where the genre is no longer minimal because you can, um, the sound becomes full again. But, ah, it's so hard to explain. But I think you probably know where I'm coming from. Um, this is the second Filter Freak plug plugin that I put on top of it. And this adds compression and it adds some more aggressive um, high resonance um, auto filtering going on. So that's, I was satisfied with that. Um, and then the next track is the bass line. Um, and then with this track, um, there's some automation. This is the very beginning of the track. So I'm going to go to the uh, middle of it. And it's going to sound like this. And without the plugins, it would sound like this. This is just what he gave me, um, but chopped up. So it's not that different, um, but let's, as you can see, I did a little um, creative splicing and stuff. Um, so I'm not sure why that click is happening, but there's a side chain and I'm putting the side chain on the kick and I'll explain that with all the other tracks. There's a lot of side chaining going on in this track, which gives it that sort of pumping feeling, you know, Daft Punk kind of for house music, in my opinion, kind of made that sound really popular and I loved it. Um, and then this is, uh, that's why I put, okay. So the clicking sound um, is fixed by this um, plugin I have called TBK by Synalxis, which is my go-to filter I use everywhere on everything. It's my favorite filter ever. It's very simple, it has very simple controls, um, and it's just versatile enough where um, it works for 95% of the times where I feel like I need a filter. Um, so here, I just filtered it down a little bit because when you have it up, it's too, there's too much sound, there's too many high frequencies, and you hear that click in there, and I'm not sure why that was there. So I just fix it, and I bring it down a little bit, and then from the beginning of the track, um, you will see that I, f I, um, I start bringing the filter up slowly. It starts down here, 
at 21 it ends up at 52 so like at the beginning of the track it's very low it's also being faded in um and that just makes it more you know smoother and dj friendly and that that all you know when when all the tracks are kind of automated properly it, it just makes it more of a, of a full production um and then finally i put um a compressor synalxis uh, also makes a pretty decent compressor when you turn this on it just brings it completely to life and there are other good compressors um interestingly enough i started with a compressor and then i put a filter and then ended with a compressor and there are no rules you don't have to do that but this is what worked out for me here i i just sort of like the way that i produce is i <clears throat> i'll i just start adding things i start adding plugins i work with loops and you start working and doing things and when it works you just you're like okay that's fine there's no rhyme or reason to why i do what i do it's just it just happens um it's kind of part of the artistic element of i suppose so then next is the um is another breakbeat loop which sounded like this um and this needed a lot of help so here i'll turn off all the plugins and you'll hear what it originally sounded like it was like that um a little quiet cute little breakbeat hi-hat situation um so with this one i added again decapitator which is part of sound toys and that's fun that's very me on remains from 1998 but it's a good place to start and then i'm like okay well i like the sound of that but i definitely going to want to gate it there's too much there's too much sound going on so i added um another filter freak which calms it down a little bit and i don't exactly remember why i chose this plugin or what i did or why and i'm not going to go through each little nuance of of uh of each knob i just sort of work with the different functions and and, and come up with something that i like and then here i added an actual gate because i'm like okay this is these aren't gating it for me so let me just put in a literal gate and then that sort of very subtly gates it you hear me turn it off it just it it, it takes some of the noise out and then i put um uh sound toys makes a an auto pan plugin an awesome auto plan pan plugin called pan man and that just sort of pans it left and right kind of randomly so that's how that ended up but this is the it's the, the first decapitator plugin that really um without it it's obviously well the gate is messing with it but yeah the decapitator is what completely colors it and changes it completely <clears throat> so that that's fun so that's in some of the track and um next is the shaker which I don't think I did much to it. It was just fine on its own. Um, here I just added the Synalxis, um compressor to it. And without it, it's like that. It just it just beefs it up and makes it louder. Um, and, uh, and with all these high frequency channels, it's a good idea to filter out uh, the bass or just put a, a low shelf or a high shelf, I should say. Um, but I didn't do that here. And when you're working digital, there's probably very little low information uh, low frequency information in the channel so it's, it's not such a big deal but kind of did this rather quickly as you can see um the next one is i believe it was another breakbeat loop this time i will just turn the plugins off first so you can hear what it sounded like originally it was that one and i like that but obviously i needed to do more to it to make it my own so first i added another filter freak it seems that i had just installed sound toys when i when i made this because i think i was getting pretty excited about this collection of plugins so that's already pretty cool um needs to be a little louder it needs a little bit of compression and um distortion so i added this decapitator which is sound toys fun distortion just made a little louder and just very very subtle amount of distortion and here I actually did want to take out some of the lows, so I added a, an Ableton EQ and took the bass out. And you can hear the difference between there's a little bass in there, and when I enable it, the bass is gone. And then I added, again, Synalxis compression to make it louder. And it really just brings it, not only makes it louder, but it just, it just adds so much life to it. And then it enables you to... Um, automate the volume with more freedom you can turn it down and you still hear the characteristics of it whereas if i turn the compression off 
and turn the volume up to the level that it was at, it does sound different. It's it's more dynamic, but the loud sounds are, well, dy more dynamic means the loud sounds are much louder than the quieter sounds. And when you c compress something, it reduces the dynamic range, but it also add, gives it life and oomph. So that's always sort of like that kind of, um, that happy medium that you have to find when you're producing between dynamic range and um, awesomeness. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So then the next track is um, the synth. Oh no, this was the, vo the vocal. Yeah, so I just did this, you know, every, as you can see, every couple bars. And that was good enough for me. I didn't, I didn't really want to do too much with that. And then as far as this, oh wait, hold on. I should probably go through the uh, plugins. So interestingly enough, in this project, there are no sends and returns. So I won't be talking about sends and returns in this video at least, um, but that's often uh, something that I use. Uh, like if I want to, if I like a delay, I, instead of putting it as an insert on the channel, I'll put it as a, as a send. And then so that I can send that from any track that's currently playing. And then that's sort of an easy way to be, um, to improvise. Um, but so for this, for these guys, let me turn these off. Yeah, so that's just the straight vocal. And then this is adding uh, adding some volume, basically, but in a, in a fun way using sound toys. You don't have to, but I, I could have used anything to boost the volume there. And then this is um, Crystallizer is, I believe, a delay mod. Yeah, delay mod from sound toys. So very simple, but just gives it, the delay gives it, um, gives it some space. And then as far as the synth goes, I did a, a similar thing with the synth as I did with the Vox, and that is um, instead of playing those those sort of uh, obnoxious sustained sounds, I just cut it up and I took little bits of it, like here. And then if you see how I, it doesn't make much sense unless it's with the track, so I'll just play it. Yeah, and I just put it here and again over here and then at the end of the phrase I do something cute that's it and I just just wanted to do that make it my own I had that that pattern in my head before I even made this and I was like all right it's easy enough to do it's a lot of fun and easy to work in Ableton um as far as the audio of the synth let's go back here Let's actually loop this bit so you can hear that. The part where you hear the um, frequency of the filter coming up, that's not me. That was just, I just cut the original um, synth in such a way to, to, it's like the beginning of it. Actually, you know what I can do? I will grab this, copy it, and then this was the original. Oh, there's not much there. <laughs> I don't remember if that's something that I did in peak or if that's how the original audio was. Um, but anyway, all right. So let's turn the plugins off. And this is what they would have sounded like originally. So it's, as you can see, it's quiet and then loud. Um, so I added compression, distortion, delay. Um, so first, this is the distortion, which really turns it up more than distorts. And then I added delay and then comp compress the whole thing. It's pretty basic. As you can see, I, I put a compressor at the end of almost every channel that I work with, and I learned that in school. Um, so this is the noise channel. It's extremely important to the track. Um, so I put um, a compressor and then an EQ, and then that's not much. But the compression has, in Ableton, has a wonderful little sidechain feature, which I use all the time. It's definitely one of my um, frequent weapons that I use. Um, and without it, it sounds like this. It's just noise. And you hear I just made a loop, and it's, it's not that smooth. But it doesn't matter, really, because the noise is occurring during the peak parts of the track when everything is happening. 
Um, so the noise is, is kind of like replaces a ride in this case. And that's sort of like has been the trend over the past, I don't know, five to seven years. So the side chain, um, listens to the kick drum could, because I told it to the side chain is turned on and the audio is from the kick and I can have it listen to any of the tracks. Um, and then what happens is it, it does that. And I have it at such an extreme setting where, um, it's distorting, but I choose it to sound that way because I like it. And then I just take an EQ and take the bass out. You can hear some bass information there and you don't want that. So I took that out. That siren's not the track, it's outside. Um, you see there's a big difference there. So there's that's why I took the reverse of the noise um, because I wanted it to build up and then as it comes out, it comes out naturally. So um, in the track, it ends up sounding like this. lovely without the side chain boring with side chain yes that's the breathing the, the the openness so that's important um we will get back to the omni actually no we'll just do this in order so the omnisphere channel this is the only um <clears throat> the only original sound in the track because i felt that most of my tracks that i do tech house tracks i love strings um, just at one point in the track, basically the main breakdown. Um, so at this part of the track, I'll mute it so you can hear what's, what was going on. You hear the synth and the noise will start to come in. The kick starts here. I put a little bass at the beginning give it a little tick up so that's fun it's fine it's almost fine but I wanted a string so um, I selected the Omnisphere and there's a lot going on in this in this string um, it doesn't sound like it but this is the uh, Omnisphere plugin it's by Spectrosonics it's got tons and tons of sound it's a lot of fun to use I choose I chose a very simple string sound, like a Juno style sound. And you can hear some panning. You hear the side chain with the kick, and that coincides with the side chain of the noise. Um, I take tons of bass out because then it would sound like that. And that's actually kind of cool. I didn't realize I probably could have done more creative things with the string, but I, I just put the string in as, as, a as like sort of a utility, and then I compressed it. Without it, it's, it, it's gone. So, um, so again, I, I, this is the Omnisphere plugin. Then I panned it. Um, then I put a compressor on it for the side chain. Then I EQ the bass out. And then I put a, a, another compressor at the end, a Synalxis. And you, you'll notice that the, I mostly use a Synalxis compression to compress the full channel, that's the very last thing I put on the chain. And I use the Ableton compressor more for effect and fun. Um, so that's the Omnisphere uh, string. And that, again, that's the only original sound that I had in this track. Um, the hi-hats uh, were originally like this. This is one of a couple hi-hat um, patterns that I used. It's pretty simple. Um, and this beat repeat, uh, this is from Ableton. I just, sometimes I just go through plugins and see what sounds good and this is what tickled my fancy at the moment. So. This is giving some, it's hard to tell because it's sort of similar to the original, but it's putting some stutter, some funky stutter patterns in there. Um, and it worked for me. And then this is another Sound Toys plugin, which I don't remember exactly what this plugin is for. Uh, might be, s I think it's, um, Oh, it's it's kind of like uh, related to beat repeat. It's 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 moving things around a little bit, and it's it's giving that flam kind of sound. Um, so that worked, and then I panned it using Panman. And this one is, I believe, random. And then again, I compress it, and that's it. 
and then that's what it sounds like with the, within the track so you almost don't even hear it but when I take it out you'll notice it sounds like something missing it's just an integral part of the track um, okay next is the synth line so that's this um, and this this was a really important um, part of the track obviously it's the main theme goes almost throughout the whole uh, the whole track so there's some automation happening here as you can see there's each 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 uh, pink square means there's automation so there's 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 filter automation I'm doing stuff with the frequency the cutoff frequency of the filter um, I'm also I guess there's some filter in the in the synopsis compressor which I wasn't even I don't even remember that but I guess I did something fun there. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, this is Nitro. Nitro is, um, or N2O is a new one by PSP AudioWare. This is an awesome plug, and it's, it's, I use it very commonly to just sort of change the sound of things. This has tons and tons of presets. It does all kinds of things, um, and you can automate the hell out of it. It's a very powerful plugin, and I love it. Um, yeah, so without these plugins, let's just disable them all. It took me a long time to get used to the way that audio plugins look in Ableton because I'm used to Logic when Digital Performer, Digital Performer before that, where you see them in a, in a, uh, in an actual like, you know, signal chain, like a, like a mixer. But anyway, so it originally sounded like that and, um, I think I just use that loop and then and then I use that which just has a little bit more reverb and it had developed more within the track. So what I like to do is I like to take one part and then you know for a track for a sound like this I like to change it very slowly over time uh, in different ways dynamically with filters with compression. Um, so uh, here you'll see when I turn the filter on. It's uh, filtering down, and if I go throughout the track, you'll see, and this is just the filter enabled, everything else is disabled. Comes up, goes back down slowly, and then um, I'm bringing, probably this is probably one of the breakdowns, and so it gets more dramatic. All right, so there's that's the filter, and then this is um, a compression that I put right after it, which is not like me, but there's probably a reason for it happens here I'm not sure but that's what I did so that's fine um, I liked it so I kept it and then I put the sound toys filter freak and then just it's making it more intense more distorted louder this is another sound toys plugin called echo boy which is what it is it's delay plugin basically so I added delay and then this is the let me come back here this is the uh, the Nitro plugin, or N2O, and that just gives it more ambience and craziness. Um, I could go through. I'm just afraid if I change the, the preset, it's gonna. I don't know if I made any changes to this preset number two, but let's just try it. No, it's fine. So as you could just see all the different bizarro plugins it has. It does everything. I settled on this because it gives it that sort of ambient, sinister sort of feel. And then here I just took some of the bass out and then put a, a, an Ableton compressor at the end. So I reversed it. This time I put a Synalxis compressor at the beginning and an Ableton compressor at the end because why not? So then that's, that's with all of these enabled on top of each other, there's nothing you know, super deliberate about why I put one after the other. I just started, I was just playing around and I was like, oh, this works, I'll use it. Um, and this is what it sounds with everything, with the string coming in, with the noise coming in, with the vocal. The noise starts coming in here. 
synth and the kicks. So there you see that the sidechain went away for a minute. Um, and the reason that happened is because the kick was gone. It's listening to the kick. So, um, you know, at the end of a breakdown, when the, when, the, when the kick comes in, it's the main part, the meat of the track. A few measures later, I like to take the kick out and then bring it back in. It just sort of adds, adds more drama to it. And um, I forgot that the sidechain of one of the major sounds was on at the moment and when the kick came out I was like oh first it bothered me I was like oh actually that's kind of cool so I left it And then when the when the noise starts fading out, the side chain sort of helps it come out smoother. Just sounds professional to me. But it didn't take that much effort. It, you know, it wasn't that hard. Um, it was just a few key manipulations of the sound and, and all of a sudden you have something that sounds uh, halfway decent. And that's basically my goal is when I, when I make something, I just sort of work until I hear something that sounds like this is something that I would want to dance to in a club. And the track winds down. The bass line is an extremely important part of this track. Without it, it's just gone. It's just the track's gone. You really need that bass. And I like DJing with tracks that have that kind of bumpy bass. Um, and, um, and you know, sometimes when I'm working on something and I, and I feel that it needs a bass line like that, but I'm having a hard time making one, sometimes I'll just go through my music library and I'll find uh, a track that has really good sub bass and I'll sample it. And um, I think it's acceptable behavior. I, I mean, I just filter it way down and I do something creative enough with it that no one has any idea where it came from because if you recognize it from the original track then that's not cool um but i think you know creatively borrowing from other tracks i think it's okay as long as you make it your own and then it just ends like this so this remix uh was fairly simple to make um uh took me about i don't know between two and four hours to do it and um it was fun and that's basically it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Email me at dylan at dylandrazen.com or you can put um, some comments right here. And um, let me know if there's any other kinds of videos that you would appreciate, either making DJ mixes in Ableton or remixes or original tracks or anything. I'm kind of getting into making videos now. So let me know. Thanks a lot for watching.